Hey hi everyone, this is Mukesh Otwani once again from learn-innovation.com Today in this video we are going to talk about uh, again a very frequently asked question in the comment section and via email that is what we should do after Selenium okay let's say you are done with Selenium you are done with all the tools which we generally cover on the way with Selenium right like uh, we cover Maven, TestNG, Jenkins, Git, GitHub, Auto IT. we also cover Extend Report, LR Report so generally when you go through the Selenium journey we generally cover a lot of tools like which we discussed just now right around 8 to 10 tools but what is next after that okay so this is my personal suggestion okay your um, your views is also welcome if you have any other points or any other views which you don't agree with me please let me know in the comment section okay so once you're done with web automation personally i feel you should also check for the api automation okay so if you talk about the recent trend okay most of the companies are moving or they're trying to implement api testing parallelly okay so uh, earlier the situation was 70 percent web 30 percent api but now the condition has been reversed now 70 percent probably the api and 30 percent is the web automation so companies are changing because they can see a lot of you know advantages when we go with api testing so we have a lot of you know stability when it comes to the performance they're very stable plus when it comes to performance they're super fast and when it comes to you know checking end-to-end -end functionality you can still do with the apis if you have the api exposed so once you're done with selenium i would highly recommend start with api testing okay in the api testing again you have multiple tools depends on which programming language you are using so if you're using java python javascript you will find a variety of libraries for api testing okay so at least pick one of the library and just understand the API concept, how API works, different kind of requests that we have, how to send payload, how to uh, send the, sorry, how to send the payload, how to get the response, how to pass the response. So these are the major stuff that you need to cover in API. So again, if you ask me the most popular tool when it comes to testing APIs manually is the Postman. Okay, so if you know the Postman, you will definitely understand how API works, right? Now, if you want to talk about the libraries which is available in Java or in other programming languages, you can explore the libraries. For Java, the best one which I personally feel is Rest Assured. Rest Assured is again a VDD style framework which will give you all the packages which will help you to do the API testing. Okay, so internally it uses Apache HTTP client. So yes, uh, very handy framework which you can use for your APIs. The next thing which you can focus after uh, API is BDD framework okay so again I'm not talking about the sequence sequence can be just after Selenium you can start BDD or maybe you can start after API right now these three things are mandatory okay so whether in which order you learn it's totally up to you but yes BDD framework are must now if you talk about uh, job description each and every job description includes Selenium one BDD framework one API testing okay so these are the three things that you should include Again, in BDD, you have two options in Java, which is Cucumber and JBehave. So again, if you talk about the popularity, I will suggest you go with the Cucumber because it has been in the market for a long time. It's highly stable and most of the companies, they have uh, their frameworks in Cucumber. So if you learn Cucumber, yes, you will be part of the companies who are already using it. Okay. So these are the three things which is mandatory nowadays, whether you are a fresher. Okay. For freshers, you might... You can skip the API testing because they don't expect much from you. But yes, if you are someone who has been into testing from three years and long, then definitely these three things you should include in your resume because based on that, you will start getting the calls. So just now we discussed about Selenium, we discussed about API, we discussed about BDD framework. So right now we are talking about all functional. Now, if you're someone who has already done all of this, then what should be the next approach? In that case, you can definitely explore the non-functional as well, okay? So non-functional, we have secure testing, we have performance, we have accessibility, right? So again, I have, I don't have experience security, I will not be the right person to comment on this. But yes, if you are someone who is looking into non-functional, then performance testing should be your next target, okay? Because performance testing is a key area when you talk about complete SDLC, right? So if you don't fit into the performance, definitely this application might not be shipped to the client. So performance testing is the must that you should have. If you are someone who has five year experience or even three years experience, right? It's a good to have the performance testing in your resume. And when it comes to complexity, guys, it's very, very easy to, you know, learn performance testing. 
definitely you need to also understand some technical terms okay and the respective tool that you're using but yes it's fun to use the performance testing and you can pick up the most popular tool called jmeter jmeter is again open source based on java so when it comes to again the job market is very high when you talk about jmeter we also have a different tools like load runner we have gatling and some of some other performance testing tool but yes when it comes to market capture still most of the market is captured via jmeter okay now what next okay you're done with selenium bdd api performance now what next now guys it's the right time to also learn about the scripting language okay now let's say you are someone who is done with all the automation in your life right now you are someone who want to improve or you want to switch to some different area then pick at least one scripting language and i would highly recommend go with the python okay so when you try for devops python will be the best candidate for you now let's talk about a very buzzword in the market which is rpa right so the question comes should we learn rpa or not is it really a future for rpa or not so guys right now market is less for rpa okay but if you talk about future perspective definitely rpa is one of the skill that you should add in your resume as well okay because most of the companies they are moving from traditional automation to business process automation and we'll talk about business process automation again rpa fits into this category so again we have so many tools in the market which you can learn for the rpa so if you talk about uh, let's say the most common which is actually we have a community version which is ui path we have automation everywhere we have we also have 80 boards and even if you talk about robot framework right which is open source now they are also coming with their own rpa framework so you can see a lot of companies are investing their time energy resources on this rpa framework on this rpa so definitely if you talk about future perspective yes this can be a market player or maybe the game changer so if you are someone who want to be in the technical field from a long uh, for the long time RP is one of the skills which you should not miss. Okay, again, it's when it comes to complexity, it's very easy because you don't need to do programming, you don't need to do coding at all. It's all about they have some set of activities, workflow, and you need to just drag and drop, and you can just build your workflow and deploy these. Okay, so when you deploy them, it's called the bots. So it's very easy. Maybe in 10 days you can learn RPA, but when it comes to implementation, it's totally up to you how many different use cases you have in how many ways you want to implement right so rp is also one of the skill once you're done with all this stuff that we discussed so far okay okay now the last thing that is again uh, i know we discussed so many stuff right in the uh, video now the question definitely should come into your mind how many tools we should learn right because there's no end and trust me guys there's no end okay it's actually there's no end to any of these tools or technologies it's all about first of all the requirement so if you're someone who is into the job, first of all, you should focus what is required for your job. Okay. And whenever you try to think like something can be implemented. Okay. Uh, please implement. Then only you will get the real knowledge because the moment you start watching YouTube uh, videos or maybe Udemy courses, you will learn the syntaxes. You will learn how the, the, these tools works. But until you don't implement, you will not understand their real use cases. Okay. So first of all, see what your job demands. If it is not required for your job, you can learn side by side. But if something can be implemented, please implement it, these technologies or the tools that we discussed and see how the magic works. And the second part now, okay? The second part is always the room for improvement. Let's say you are into a manual or you are into a job which does not require all these tools and stuff. Still, I would suggest you should always upgrade yourself. If you just take one hour of your day just to learn these tools, right? I'm sure that within six months, you will learn all these tools that we discussed. So always keep learning these stuff. Okay. Somewhere, someday these tools will be applicable or useful in your career. Maybe right now it might not fit into your requirement. It might not fit into your job, but that's okay. At least you should understand how these things works and how are these tools or framework works. So once you get into that actual requirement, you will have a clear idea that these are the tools we can use. Yeah. So yeah, you should go for these set of tools that we discussed. So thank you so much guys. This was just my point that I want to convey. This is totally uh, okay if you have a different opinion and I would love to hear about your opinion. So maybe you can send me an email. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And if you're someone who is watching this video into some different platform, just let me know in the comment section and I would love to see you. 
So in case if you're new to this channel guys, then make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, share with your friends and I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.